All right, this is the Real Talk podcast with Gary Kelly, and I am joined today by the ever debonair Brad Avergon from Fairway Continually Independent Mortgage. How are you, Brad? I'm doing well, Gary. How are you? Good. So I want to set this up. I was having a nice, quiet weekend day, and you <laughs> called, and you said, can you, com- can you let me vent about something? And I said, sure. And you wanted to talk about the posts that I've put up here. Yeah. Uh, for those that are watching on video, for those that are not watching on video, it's a post from someone talking about how they had someone that was pre-approved by Rocket Mortgage, Quicken Loans. She goes on, she's an agent, she goes on to say that she's never had good experience with them, and she gave her buyers an opinion and turned over one of her preferred people. Uh, And their response was, thanks, but Rocket was great in the past, and we've already started underwriting with them. So with that, Brad, yeah, my experience, and, and this is just my experience, is that um, you know, I, I, I think that Rocket does certain things well, um, like they can pre-improve in under an hour, which is kind of handy if you're late on a day on a Saturday and you need to get something pre-approved. Mm-hmm. Uh, but beyond that, I, I have had transactions that have gone well, and I have also had transactions that ended up in the toilet, so mm-hmm. not particularly good. Um, but Brad. This was your call to me, so I want to I want to give you the opportunity to rant, and I'll sit here and take a swig of my Starbucks and let you talk. <laughs> Thanks for sending one my way, Gary. So first of all, this is not a sl- anything about a slam, you know, Rocket Mortgage or any other lender for that matter. That's not what this is about. Um, my concern was that basically we see a movement with this you know, this uh, National Association of Realtors case is going on. It's a movement to, uh, you know, away from what I consider to be things that are in the best interest of the buyer, okay? And I believe that having a relationship with a local lender, uh, a, a local realtor, and a local attorney has great value, okay? Um, has great value. When I am working with a client. My my business is solely built on referrals from my clients, whether my client be a realtor or my client be a borrower or a buyer. Um, that's how I build my business. I do not have an online marketing agency that does all this you know uh, uh, you know whether you whether you jump on on you know, Google or whatever, there's all this online marketing to draw in representatives. I don't have somebody doing television commercials for me during Super Bowls and things like that. So for me, it's all about the experience for the client. And that, what does that do? That holds me accountable. It holds me accountable to the realtors. It holds me, that that refer me business, it holds me accountable to my clients because I need them to be happy. I need them to tell the people that they know, you know, so... As I was thinking about this and thinking about this whole issue going on with uh, the the court case that is basically saying it's not going to be mandatory for sellers to pay for the commissions, I thought, how is this going to be mandatory for the sellers to pay the commissions for the buyer's agent? For the buyer's agents. I'm sorry, I didn't finish my sentence. I should have. Yes, you don't. You don't. As a, as a realtor, I am no will no longer if it goes through will no longer be allowed to advertise a sales percentage for the buyer's agent. Right, right, right. And, and I guess my concern is is that I believe, especially with first time home buyers, that they need representation. I've been doing this for over thirty six years, and. I have experienced a lot of clients. I, I would say the majority of my clients turn to me because they need that expertise. They need that experience. They need somebody looking out for their interests. And my concern is, and I obviously I care very much for my clients. You can probably hear the passion in my voice. But um, my concern is that that's moving away. 
and I understand the argument is that, you know what, if the sellers don't have to pay for it, the prices will be cheaper. I don't believe that that's true, that prices will go down on real estate. I don't believe that's true. And the question I would have sellers ask themselves is, are you going to sell your house for less money because your expenses are less? No. I think any honest seller is going to say, no, I'm going to maximize my profit. I'm going to maximize the amount of money I can get. So prices are not going to go down. What is going to happen, though, is first-time home buyers are, I believe, going to be put in a precarious position. They're not going to necessarily have the representation they have if they don't uh, figure out a way to um, pay for either representation by a buyer agent or pay an attorney additional fees or do something to be able to look out for their interests. And what's more is, if somehow prices become, are, are able to be inflated to cover the buyer agency, if a, if a seller has two similar bids on the table, one where they have to pay the buyer agency and one where they don't, my guess is they're going to take the one that they don't have to pay for the buyer agent. And that may be a repeat buyer or somebody who has higher resources, but it's, it may not be the first time home buyer. And that's going to, you know, that's going to put the first time home buyer in a difficult position, harder than they've been in before. I, um, I couldn't I couldn't agree with you more, Brad. I look at it and I say right now, if I can advertise four percent as a commission, just picking a number out of the air, I'm not saying that that is typical, but I want to distinguish from the six percent that's in the trade all the time is the typical commission. If I advertise 4% and I'm splitting that 2% for the seller, 2% for the buyer, uh, I can't advertise that 2% now. So if you've got a savvy buyer's representative, they're going to pick up the phone and they're going to call and they're going to say, are you offering any sugar on this deal? Okay. And you know, at that point, we'll have a discussion. Taking that off MLS, in my mind, does not increase transparency, it takes transparency away. The other thing that comes as a part of it from my perspective is we're gonna be uh, encouraged, forced to have buyer's agreements with folks. Now, it's not uncommon that we'll get a call on a weekend, someone wants to go look at a property, and if we're, if we're available, we will show it. Why not? That's our job. Uh, but now it's gonna be, well, we're gonna see this property, before we do that, we have to have you look at this buyer agreement and have you go through that. Uh, here's our buyer's packet. It's, it's just chock full of information. Well, it is, and it's a good buyer's packet, but you've got to sign an agreement that you will work with us for a certain amount of time. Now, I, I like to say people buy from people. So if someone works with us and they don't like us, I don't think they should be tied into it, as opposed to as opposed to someone that's been seeing houses with us for six months and then decides they want to write, have another agent write the offer. That's kind of annoying if you want to know the truth. But I, I don't think it's I personally, you know, right now it says commentary across here. I'm sure that there's some way in this software I could make it say that commentary. It's my opinion that that's not necessarily a good thing for the buyers, particularly first time buyers. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think that there needs to be some options for choice. Um, I, in my business, that's ob absolutely been the case, right? You get to choose who you want to work with as a lender. Yeah, just like you get to choose with who you want to work with as a realtor uh, and, I, and, and, and an attorney, you know, um, and I think that's a good thing. I think that's a good thing. Um, look at there, there are plenty of people that are going to, 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 to go to rocket mortgage and then that's fine. There are plenty of people that may flock to an online lender and that's fine too. Okay. If that's what they choose to do, as long as they have an understanding. But I, my concern is, is that blended in all this has been this misconception that prices will drop by, by, you know, the, the, by the mandatory seller paying the Cobra fee. I don't believe that that is the case. And my bigger concern is, is that buyers need first, especially first time home buyers need legal representation because in our industry, what buyers don't know 
can hurt them. I'm going to use as a quick example what happened during COVID where a lot of buyers waived their home inspections and they waived their mortgage contingencies. And um, a lot of buyers after the fact, they bought the home, they found out there was structural problems or all sorts of other problems and they were upset. Now, they were my clients were certainly educated on it. And I said, listen, if you waive this, this is what this means. You could have problems down the road. Understand that going into it. In the case of a mortgage contingency, if you waive this, you could end up losing your deposit money. Understand that. And you know, that that is 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 a very serious situation. And I think that clients really need to understand that this is, I don't think they're going to end up winning. I think buyers need representation. They need to understand the legalities of what they're signing. It's the biggest purchase of their life in most cases. I think that you know, it's a good point. And the other thing is, I think that if you work with the team that works together a lot, now you and I do transactions. You are not the only loan officer that we've ever recommended. And I know that I'm not the only realtor you've ever recommended. You've got to spread that around. And I think we sure. all understand that. Having said that, there is something to be said for having the, the team, an intact team, where you, I know if someone goes to you with a shaky pre-approval, that you're going to sit there, you're going to act very paternal, and you're going to help them understand the things that they need to do to pull the deal together, as opposed to just simply saying, yeah, this isn't going to happen. Uh, it's even which... it's even more than that, Gary. There's a certain level of due diligence that I do because I've been doing this as long as I have. I'm kind of an old school guy in that I look at every document that comes across the table. I do a lot of upfront work. I don't know that all lenders do that. I'm not saying any one lender in particular, but because my reputation's on the line, I had an offer accepted this weekend where the listing agent recognized my name and accepted the offer because he knows the type of level that I do for that buyer that was making an offer. And I, I think that makes a huge difference. I, I think at the end of the day, people buy from people. We had a, we had a transaction, not dissimilarly, a week ago where we got a call from the agent, someone we know, someone we know well, saying, if we go with your offer, is it going to stay together? Is it going to hang together? Is your buyer's pre-approval solid? And is, you know, are they going to nitpick on a home inspection, which was interesting because we were waiving that. Um, it's an investor client, so we, we were not into, let's do the home inspection. Uh, but this agent doing their due diligence said, listen, you know, I can talk to the seller, but if the deal's going to fall apart, tell me now. Don't wait till later, which I think is a fair a fair thing. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. You know, in this business, you want both sides to feel like they won. You know, you, nobody nobody wants to slam a a, 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 a a deal down, or at least I don't feel that way, that you want to slam a deal down somebody's throat, whether the, sell, the seller wants to feel that they got a good price for the house, the buyer wants to feel that they they got a, 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 a good price, you know, paying a good price for the house too. Um, and, and everybody can get along. When you get these situations that are very one-sided, it can be, it can be challenging. And, you know, I think in our business, we try to, we try to make sure that it, Keep communication going, keep transparency going, and and try to make sure everybody wins in a situation. And I think that requires a lot of upfront due diligence on my end and on your end, doing investigations on a property. You know, I just I just think that the buyer representation is important. And I think unfortunately the buyer, in first case, the first time home buyers don't have the funds necessarily to be able to pay for representation. And my concern is they'll pass on that. And that there will be a, a you know, a concern and it because sellers would rather avoid that cost. And I, I don't blame the sellers. I, I don't. But I think there's a, a, a having done this. This has been the way it's been for 30, you know, 30 over 36 years that I've been doing this. So it was always built in. And 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 and, and by the way, commissions are negotiable. They always have been. You've got one realtor that will charge six, another that will charge five. Some may charge four for different level of services or whatever the case may right. be. And then split the co It's never been a set excuse me, set in stone fee. That's something you can negotiate. As you know, but... I used to work for Remax. And Remax, the whole idea was, you know, do everything you can for the client and you get the maximum commission. And I said when I was there, I think that we should have a Remen where it's a reduced commission, but commensurately reduced services. No, no one liked that idea. And, you know, they hung me out to dry, uh, figuratively. Uh, but I think that the idea is, 
you got to sit down, make sure that you understand the services. If, if you're a consumer, the services you're being provided and make sure that they're things that you want. And if not, have a conversation about them. I think you're right. I think you're right. I mean, I, I know there are online listing agencies, just like there are online lenders. There are online listing agencies where you can pay a flat fee, get your property listed, and you're the one showing the property every time they come by. Right. Is that is that in the best interest of the seller? I would call that into question. Maybe maybe they think it is. Maybe And maybe in their opinion, it is. And that's okay if that's the way they choose. They choose to ex- absorb the liability if they say the wrong thing or don't say whatever it is. They choose to, to take that on. Okay, but it's certainly it's it's about service level. And I think that when you're buying or selling a property, you really need to be be aware of the legalities involved in this because they are expensive if you make a mistake. Well, Brad, I want to thank you for popping on here on a Monday morning. Um, Next time when you call, I'm going to go live at that point and just let you vent real time. Um, which probably wouldn't be good for either of us, <laughs> but I pre- I think it's a good topic, a really good topic. And I appreciate your coming on and spending some time with us this morning on it. Happy to do it, Gary. Thanks, Brad. Well, that wasn't painful.